welcome to my channel, Realism Channel. It's Rhea Petrie here, and I am so excited, so blessed, so grateful that you've chosen to spend some time with me yet again. You know, tonight, today, whatever time you should be seeing this is, it's a special day. You know, it's been a tough week, and so I contemplated on whether or not I was gonna like stick with regular schedule programming and do my video because that's what I declared to do and da da da. Um, but I'm not gonna lie and say that my heart is not heavy right now and say that you know our nation is undergoing shock and grief um, and loss. But you know, God is good, and so I said, well, why don't I just speak about the inspiration that has come um, in spite of the sadness um, because I know that you know, we got to keep pushing through and um, there's such power in the human spirit that we can really, you know, encourage and love on one another and spread that light. So welcome. Here we are um, again for another realism installment. And what's real to me this week, um, that life is real, man. Life is real. Uh, we suffered a major loss this week, losing, you know, Kobe Bryant and his daughter and all of those other um, beloved passengers and you know it really got me to thinking about life um, I know that everybody handles death and loss in different ways uh, some people become angry some become low or depressed some are more um, secluded isolated um, some become silent uh, some busy themselves to distract them from the pain um, some resort to other things to overcompensate or to avoid. Uh, but for me, I'm always pretty much deep thinking, <laughs> always in deep reflection. And so, um, you know, when I was reflecting on what I wanted to entitle this video, my mind was in so many places. Um, but I will say, you know, there is a scripture that says that God works everything together for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And so, because I do believe in God, which I am not ashamed to say on this channel, I believe that he works everything together for the good. And so what I felt most in thinking about the tragedy this week, um, and even thinking about uh, a year ago almost, we lost Nipsey Hussle, another king in our community, rest in peace. Um, but I really thought about the impact that both Kobe and, um, Nipsey had on our environment, on um, the community, on people who knew him, who love him, who didn't know him, but were impacted even after their loss. And I said, you know what? I want to focus on being a blessing. So I want to entitle this video, Be a Blessing. So let's talk about that. You know, I also found myself um, just in deep sadness and shock in light of these recent events. And I said, you know, God, like, why would you let this happen? You know, I think that a lot of times people will think that because, you know, you're a Christian or you're a believer or, you know, you're a person of faith that you don't have them same questions. But I'm like, like, why? You know, why? Um, but the truth is, God's ways are above our ways. And there's nothing that happens in this life that runs by his desk <laughs> that he doesn't know about. Um, so, yeah, I just want to focus on the enlightenment, you know. I, um... Ooh, I just want to give honor to every single person whose life was lost and those families that have to figure it out and the loved ones and all of that. I just really, really pray with every fiber of my being that healing is coming, that healing and comfort and peace is coming. Um, you know, I consider myself to be an eternal optimist. So no matter what, I'm going to find that light um, at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to listen for, you know, that nugget that we can just hold on to. I'm going to look for that glimmer of hope, um, no matter how tragic or low the situation might be. So in this, um, what touched me in both Nipsey's life and Kobe's life is just the impact, the heart, the passion, the purpose, the way that they served, um, the way that they really shed light and love and blessed so many people. And so, you know, what I found myself doing and what I find myself often, even though it's like it never gets old, like you always think like, okay, when people say life is not promised, life is short, you would think that when you abruptly lose someone or when there's these types of shocking 
tragedies, you're like, it never quite settles. <laughs> it never, you know, you still are like shocked. You still have the same weight. Um, and even more so for those that knew and loved them. But, you know, I'm still waiting for it to, to not be as shocking. Um, I think the most important emotion that I feel is just that, you know, when you look at your life and when I look at my life, what I found to stick with me most is like, okay, Rhea, <clears throat> let's think about your life. Let's think about how you're currently living your life. Are there any things that you can do that are within your control um, to like let go of or to embrace more peace or more joy? You know, when I think about, you know, when people say like, oh, today could be your last breath. I always ask myself, well, shucks, when I thought about you know, it's hard not to imagine the imagery of people that are like losing their lives. You always wonder like, well, what were they doing in those final moments? Or what were they experiencing? Were they experiencing pain? You know, you think like that. That's just what the human mind does. And I said, you know, if, if I, God blesses us with a breath each day, you know, and prayerfully, if we're blessed to have one tomorrow, I said, in my last moments and breath, what would I want to feel? Do I want to feel bitter? Do I want to feel you know, low? Do I want to feel angry? Do I want to feel sad? Do I want to feel depressed, down, um, disappointed, discouraged? No, I don't want to feel none of those things. Um, and so what that causes me to do is to check and say, you know what, Rhea, so what can you do? What's going on up in here, up in here? And, you know, to whomever might be listening or watching today, what's going on up in here and up in here to see if there's any way we can filter through some of this stuff so that you can get about the business of living a lighter life. Because we just truly never know. We never know. And there's no worse guilt than not, you know, working out that stuff now than when you lose a loved one and you never have the opportunity to reconcile. Or, you know, when you wanted to say something or you were stuck in pride or whatever it is. And then now you don't have that opportunity. So... That's where my heart is. And I am, this is a real talk, what's real to me this week, real life moment for Rhea. Um, and I just pray that it can resonate and shine that light on you so that maybe you can also comment or you know email me, holla at me, talk to somebody you love, whatever way you choose to take, you know, whatever you might get, if anything. Um, I just pray, yeah, that we can move forward through life with more strength. And so. And thinking about that and thinking about my last breath and my last moment and, you know, being real with myself, I talked about that a little bit in a former video about just, you know, these self analysis that I like to do and being real with yourself and seeing, okay, self, let me ask you some questions to really get in there. Peel the onion back is a term that a lot of therapists and coaches use. Um, but one thing that I decided that I would do, and this was actually kind of a New Year's 2020 vision um, thing that I came up with in the former video was that I wanted to operate on a new operating system. It was just something that, you know, I love myself. I am not going to lie. I'm very proud to be who I am and to embody the things that I do. But, you know, we all got to grow. We all got to change. That's what healthy things do. We grow and we change. And so if you ever find yourself being stuck or being too set in your ways, for me, that's never good. I'm always like, okay, people adapt around me. There's new people in my circle. There's new people that God is using me to impact. And I have to always ask myself, like, how I operate, is it conducive to the growth, you know, that I desire, to the life that I desire? So that's what I'm committing to is a new operating system. And especially this week, it just sobered us all up. Like, okay, wait a minute. Ho, ho. We got to get about the business of living the lives that we want. So got a few points to go over with you guys. Let's, let's, let's get into it. So one thing that I am deeply committed to in this new operating system of life um, is to renew my perspective. So I'm one of those people that, you know, I consider myself to be very real talk. Um, and so I was, you know, doing my soul search and I'm asking myself like, you know, what are some of the things that cause me stress or that I allow to inhabit my creative space, my brain space, my energy space. And one of those things is my perception. So I said, Lord, you know, one of the things that I am willing to, to really put on the, on the table, on the altar, for those of you who believe, um, in the prayer closet, on my knees, wherever I got to submit it is my perception of people and things that, that irritate me or that, you know, produce negative feelings. I am a very feeling person. I'm also a, a thinking person, but I do have emotions. I'm very balanced in that way because I'm like, okay, 
I feel, I feel what people feel and I feel the energy and um, I've allowed myself sometimes to be consumed with other people's energy um, and even just my own, you know, not being sure of things sometimes. I talked about that before, like I could just get, oh, I don't like to be confused. I don't like to waver. That's just not good for me. Um, so yeah, the perception. So I had to really kind of look and think like, okay, what are some things that I'm currently, you know, holding on my plate? And, you know, that's one thing I decided is Lord, and I'm doing this prayer study. And man, I tell you, when you make a decision to work on something or you do something and you really, you know, surrender that thing and you make an intention, I just believe that confirmation comes. And that's exactly what happened for me doing this prayer study. Shout out to the instructor, um, Angela Montano is her name. But it's a 21-day prayer study. And I said, Lord, two things came out. You know, the, the theme for tonight, that's actually one of my inspirations. But uh, with regard to healing your perception. So I believe that, you know, we could try to make people change, situations change. We could just grumble. I'm not really a complainer. And I'm actually allergic to the complaining spirit. Lord! Um, but what I believe in my heart of hearts is that we have the ability to heal our perception. So one of the things in the prayer study he talked about was like just putting that thing before God. If you pray, and even if you don't pray, there is no prerequisite to prayer. And I've taught a class on that before. You can just go as you are, come as you are, um, and, and pray that thing. And I said, Lord, touch my perception. I, within my own strength, sometimes we don't have the ability. Someone might have burned us so bad or whatever the way we view a situation we might think is so right in our minds. But guess what? With humility, you can serve that thing on up to the Lord and say, Lord, heal my perception. Because if somebody else won't change, if somebody else is stuck on a crazy cycle or whatever cycle, or I'm going to make your life miserable cycle, or my life is miserable, so I just want you to feel a little bit of that cycle or whatever, I'm going to come in and stank up the joint cycle. All of those things that we've experienced um, with loved ones, with coworkers, with strangers, just with people in, in a bad space. Sometimes that thing could just, you know, that thing could, that flame could hit you and burn your stuff off, you know? So I just want to surrender my um, negative perceptions because I gotta, we gotta walk freer, we gotta walk lighter. So this is a part of my freedom movement, guys. Um, check your perceptions of things, of people, of situations that produce negative feelings within you and surrender them, surrender them to prayer because it works, it works, it works. <laughs> this next one is not rocket science because guess what? It's come up several times and that is forgiveness. So are there any people um, that you need to forgive? Do you need to forgive yourself? Forgiveness is like a weight. I did a speech, I did Toastmasters before, shout out to Toastmasters, and one of my first speeches was about forgiveness and it talked about how, you know, you could Google it, but it's very common. It's like poison for you when you think that it's towards the other person. The other person is living their best life and you sitting up here harboring, you know, negative feelings. And I have lived that. I've lived that for almost a decade. I have to be honest, transparent moment. So I said, Lord, you know what? I got to surrender this thing. You know, you think about heartbreaks. You think about hurt. You think about people who did you wrong, who didn't understand you. You got to let that thing go. So I just want to put, also put on the table, put on the chopping block, put on the surrender table, forgiveness. Who do you need to forgive today? What do you need to release? I talked about my little mantra. Hallelujah, the release I let go. And so it is, amen, I release, I release this unforgiveness. I'm not going to give no names because y'all don't know me like that. <laughs> just kidding. But you will. No, but just in all transparency, I mean, it's, it's not about anybody. It's just about me. Um, just me being able to be real. Yes, there are people that I need to forgive. There are situations that I need to forgive. And on this day, in this hour, no matter when you're watching this, by the time you watch this, I will have forgiven them. The slate is clean, okay? It is clean because I want to I wanna raise my vibration. I want to lift um, my spirits up. And anything that is causing emotional weight could come from so many places. It's not just sadness. It could be anger. It could be that confusion, that toxicity, that unforgiveness. All of those things manifest in your emotions. And we just don't have time like that, people. That's what the real, real, real is. So who do you need to forgive? Get about the business of doing that thing today. Whoo, this is a good one too. How many dreams? I was also thinking about like, I am a journaler. I have journaled. I have things that I've journaled from 20 years ago or plus actually. 
and I just journal that thing. Ooh, when I get my talk show, ooh, when I did, that was my ultimate dream and still is. You know, I would love to, love to, love to have a talk show. But until then, you've tuned in to the Realism channel, amen. Visit my site, www.realism.com. But the truth is, you know what? This is a step. This is a step for me. It may not be a big step. It may not be a glamorous step. I'm on my way. I believe in faith that God is aligning resources and people, um, you know, to help me. But in the meantime, this has been such a blessing to me. So thank you for taking the time to even listen to me. But my number one dream was having a talk show, having a blog, um, working with couples, working with individuals, doing speaking engagements, moderating panels, interviewing. That is my passion is creating a safe space for people to share their stories. So guess what? I'm starting that thing in this season, okay? Pray with me, um, roll with me. If you hear of any opportunities, leave me a comment, reach out on my website there. So send a smoke signal. I always talk about it. Any way you need to reach me, text me. All of those things, it's all on my website. You can get in touch with me. But, you know, I'm about living that thing today. I was reading through journal after journal. And when I get it, when I get it, people who love me in every job I've had, girl, when you get your show, girl. And I just love it because that has encouraged my soul. But guess what? Somebody over here had to take a step. So how many dreams are you guys sitting on? How many things have you declared that you were going to do? We may not be promised all of 2020. I hate to sound morbid in that way, but let's get about the business of like, shaving those things away and then clearing our space, our creative space to say, what can we dive into and start today? So let's live our dreams today. So one other thing that I was talking about with um, the prayer study and being a blessing, and I even did a blog about it. So you can check out my blog. I actually did it uh, yesterday or by this point, it'll be a few days ago, but www.realism.com. It's R-H-E-A-L-I-S-M. You can click on blog, but it was entitled be a blessing. And guess what? You know, I am a definitions person, so I'm going to read the definition. I just have always been that way. I love to like look things up and, you know, see what they really, really mean because, you know, we put our own meanings to things. But the definition of a blessing, there's two. And I'm going to say, um, you know, what it is. A blessing is a beneficial thing for which one is grateful. Something that brings well-being. The second definition is a person's sanction, approval is what sanction means, or support. And those two resonated with me. There's other definitions, but those are the two that I am going to use. And I'm going to tell you why. So the imagery that I had and even in the prayer study that was discussed is like when you think about what it means to bless somebody, I know that. Um, the teacher was saying how sometimes, and I am notorious for saying this, would be like, oh, bless they heart, bless they heart. And I think it's such a catchphrase for me, but when you really, really think about what it means to bring well-being to a thing or to, um, you know, I, I would like to say give light to a thing, it just kind of convicted me in a way and it shook me in a way because I'm like, oh, when I be saying bless they heart, I don't necessarily mean like, Lord, shine light on their heart, you know, but that's moving forward, what I will mean. So let me tell you, what, what came to my mind is, okay, Lord, how can I bless those tough situations or those people that have broken my heart or hurt me or did something that I'm just not rolling with? Um, how can I bless those people in those situations? How can we bless those tough situations? Um, how can I bless people that irritate, anger, or disappoint me? So, you know, we either are in a tough situation that we can't change or a person brings something to us that we can't control. How can we then give light to them? How can we do this? It's hard, honey. Let me tell you, I am not an expert on this, but this is what's real this week. This is what, whenever I learn something or whenever I'm putting something into practice, it's my goal, it's my job to share that. So that's what I'm doing. And then lastly, how can I spread light and love to those that I don't even know? I think that um, in this day and time, Humanity, we have so much power. There's so much love, um, especially, unfortunately, in times of loss. I just feel that that connection with each other. So let's capitalize on that. Let's spread light and love to other people. Um, because some people, this might be the only light and love they get, you know? We just never, never know when our smile or when our text or when our last conversation with somebody will be the last one. So let's make it a good exchange. Let's make it a meaningful one. So I consider myself a woman of prayer. Um, and I thought, you know what, Lord, I got to keep it real with myself because I pray up in here. So as we close this video, um, it is my prayer that whoever is listening to my voice, whoever is watching this, that we can step outside of ourselves um, and just open our heart space, our mind space, 
Uh, change does not happen overnight, but if we could just open up ourselves to relief, to relieve ourselves of the hurt, of the disappointments, of the mistrust, of the just dependence on our way, um, on the old storyline, on um, feelings, pride, insecurity, fill in the blank. Whatever those things that we might need to open ourselves up to let God, to put that light on so he could see what's going on in there or so that we could see, you know, we're very intuitive beings. Um, we know when ourselves, when we're off, we know when we're not quite ourselves. And sometimes we might be so lost that we don't. But my prayer right now is that your heart space will be open to it because as long as there's an openness, as long as there's a crack, that's it. That's it. Um, change can come. So I pray right now that we can be open to that. I pray that um, that we would make it a point to consciously shed our light. Everybody on this planet has light. No matter what we think, we all have a light. So it's my prayer that we would shed that light on some situation. We all just think about it. We take a moment of silence. Think about a situation, a person, a, a thing from the past, a current weight, irritation, whatever. Fill in the blank. I don't care because I'm not here to judge. I got my own baby and it ain't one. Um... But let's just surrender that thing. Let's think about how we can shed light on it so that we can get about the business of freeing ourselves and living life in a more enriched way and not one that perpetuates some cycles that just aren't healthy for us. So I pray that. Um, and then I pray that as we move forward with more appreciation for life um, and the way we experience life, the way we experience each other, let it be in love, let it be in truth. Um, yeah, even if we can't bring ourselves, I'm guilty of this, if we can't bring ourselves to like pick up the phone right now and say, hey, I forgive you. Even if you just start the, the way that I'm going to do it, just start even in our heart space and say, you know what? I don't hold any malice. I don't hold any ill will. Um, Lord, just direct my steps. It's a day by day thing. Open my heart space. You give me the instruction. I may not have the strength to just reach out today. It's okay. No judgment. It's all about what you're holding in here. So let go of that toxicity in here. Make the decision in here and just be open. And I can't wait to hear the testimonies rolling in, guys. So I love you. Thank you for joining me. Like, subscribe, comment. Um, I'm going to continue to pray for those of you that pray um, with me. Let's just join our faith together, our love together. Let's treat each other well. Let's spread light. Because I believe, you know, we pray, pray, pray and ask God, Lord, bless me with this. God, bless me with this. Universe, bless me with this. But I don't know how much we pray, hey, use me to be a blessing. And I'm going to stop throwing that bless your heart around. I'm going to really think, how can I take the light, even if it's a glimmer, how can I take the glimmer of light within me and drop it on the situation? So that's it. Thank you for joining me. I'll uh, catch you guys next week. Peace. Mm -hmm.